Hi everyone, this is a little brush video comeback and welcome back. So in this video, I'm just going to talk a little bit again about the brushes that I'm using and different usages. In this video, I'm going to focus more about angles and what I mean about different angles. These are all like my round brushes, different round brushes that I use, by the way. And so, first of all, I'm going to wake up my brushes. This is a Neiden palette and um, this is a, just like a water bottle spray. Um, and all of these brushes are all linked in the description again. Um, and this is a sketchbook that I really like. It's like a Fabriano sketchbook. I'm going to also link these later, but again, in this video, I'm just going to stay focused uh, because last week the video was about brushes and I'm going to do more brushes content this week too. And welcome back again. My name is Sunny and I'm going to create like watercolor content on my channel. I also have roomy poetry content on this channel. And uh, if you're into poetry and watercolors, I think you may want to be around. And if you like to subscribe to, you know, stay updated on my content, that's great. So depending on what kind of angle you use with your watercolor, you can create different forms and shapes. Watercolor can be tricky because unlike other mediums, whatever shape you create, because watercolor can become permanent as soon as it dries, then you can't fix and change it. So it's going to stay like that. For instance, when I have like my watercolor brush wet, you see it comes to a very nice pointy shape. This is watercolor brush Skoda number 10 Perla, that is really nice and white when it's uh, brand new, but now it's kind of picked up on the colors that it had. So I'm going to use a little bit of a leftover whatever color I have, because this is just going to be like a little bit of a, practice. I start with some like lines just to show you what I mean by that. I'm going to zoom on my camera just a little bit. Let me see here. So like if I have like a more of a 90 degree angle and I use just the tip of a brush, I can get this really nice line. But if I lay my brush down, like more of a 45 degree angle, I can definitely get more of like a feeling, like I can spread a little bit more. So like this is more of a spreading versus getting more like detailed lines when I have like more of a 90 degree angle. I kind of use my pinky to kind of like lean on the paper and kind of create those lines and shapes. And then if I want more detailed work, then I go to like smaller size brushes and it can be brush number six, it can be brush number two. So the size of the brush with round brushes, basically, it really depends on kind of like the detail work you want to do, right? And this is my brush number 12 Skoda Ultimo that I really like, it's a travel brush. So you basically can kind of like take it with you anywhere and it becomes so tiny and it's so cute and I love this brush. You can kind of close the lid like that and I do like paint a lot and I can create a lot of content like with this. And this is my brush number 12 Heron that is like a short brush and I do a lot of uh, work with this one and I can travel with this one too. So again, depending on what part of the brush you use, you can create different forms and shapes. So in this video, I'm trying to just do like a little exercise with lines, a very simple one, so that you can also learn, depending on what um, area of the brush you use, you can get different shapes and forms. So first I'm going to 
clean my palette because I'm going to do some intuitive flowers because I've seen they have been pretty popular recently on Instagram and other videos and we're going to see how you can use your brushes and create those. I like to usually wet my palette before I mix my paint. That way it's kind of easier to create whatever paint you like. And in this case, I'm going to use my Canson paper, Canson Heritage, which I'm also going to put a link for you. It's a really nice paper. And it's like 300 gram or 140 pounds, 100% cotton. It's a really nice paper. And I went ahead and used my Indian inks to do a really nice vintage background for this paper. I'm just going to like, try to paint some like you know intuitive like flowers and let's see So like one flower shape that you could per you know kind of like do on this color would be really nice is like a purplish type of flower you can use the color violet and it can be like a basic five petal type of flower And what I'm basically going to do it can be either five or six. So you see how I'm, my brush doesn't have a perfect shape and the consistency I'm using here is more like a watery consistency. I'm kind of forming and shaping my petals with like the really not perfect form of the brush and I'm using it kind of to my advantage at this point I'm just like trying to create some forms and as you can see this kind of are getting the then I go to my Persian blue butter consistency and I start to drop some like more pigment but again this is butter and I'm starting to connect them in the center and I come back around the petals and try to create some drama around and there is no right or wrong with intuitive flowers. These are your flowers and you can do whatever you want with them. Then I go back to my purple and try to bring more purple there. And I do another one, but this time a little tinier. I go closer to that other purple one, maybe one a little higher, but do you see like how I'm using my brush as like a source to kind of like guide me through this, maybe one here. This one got a little bit more buttery and then I go around it and like just try to create more flowers here. And this one I spray over to give it like a little bit more now I go to my green 
I have a little bit of a sap green here and I'm just trying to do some little like now I'm a 90 degree angle and I'm just trying to create with like spreading technique that I maybe have mentioned earlier going to my buttery Indian yellow getting more of a buttery consistency here and then I go to the Prussian blue again and with the tip of the brush I'm trying to create more texture on my leaves these are all from imagination so they don't have to be again intuitive flowers And these are the silhouettes that I'm just adding in the background. They don't have to be, again, anything specific. I'm just using the big brush. Trying to create some sort of forms and shapes that are going to suggest these are your flowers. With the first one, I like to do a little bit more now that it's damp stage. I like to help it not look so flat and even though it's like intuitive, I like to make it feel like a little bit more wild and real, if it makes sense. And I go to the center, I like to add a little bit more dots to it and a little bit more of the lines. And at this point, I think it's kind of like in a good position. I do the same thing here even to these ones a little bit more here even though they're in the background they could benefit from a little bit of a like your attention and I go back with the green for the same type of texture and detail and as you can see my brush is more of a 90 degree now and if you want to switch go to a smaller detail brush for this level of work that's fine I'm going back to the brush number one for more detail and I'm adding a little bit of more texture here and that's it at this point I leave it and basically it took us 10 minutes to do Work. I'm going to post a photo of it. Thanks for your attention.